This, this is Austin Burke, my last will and testament. There's someone in my house to hear it. Oh my god. Wait a second. I gotta go. I gotta go. Bye bye. See you later. What is up, big fans? Welcome back to my channel. Just ignore the intros. Today, we're going to talk about the brand new entry in the Paranormal Activity franchise that came out this weekend via streaming. So I need to know down below, what is your favorite Paranormal Activity movie? And let's talk about Next of Kin. So Margo, a documentary filmmaker, heads to a secluded Amish community in hopes of learning about her long-lost mother and extended family. Following a string of strange occurrences and discoveries, she comes to realize that this community may not be what it seems. Emily Bader plays Margo. She's the actor of note here. Uh, the director, William Eubank, was uh, the guy that brought us Underwater last year. And that was a movie that a lot of people appreciated and responded well to. So I had interest going in, but you know when a franchise extends for so long and it just keeps going, you entry after entry, kind of with a Saw franchise, the Halloween franchise. A lot of horror franchises tend to do that nowadays. So you're going to get some good ones but you're also going to get some very mediocre and or bad ones. So where does Next of Kin fall? Okay, they're filming a documentary. It's the perfect opportunity to use that found footage style that I wish the film would have committed to just a bit more, right? It's integrated, absolutely, but it's not fully found footage, and I found that odd throughout the movie. Then we have the story itself, where our main character, she's curious about where she comes from, and it's the perfect opportunity for her to create something from that for us, her audience. Well, as they go and they explore this community just a bit more, they start to realize, well, things aren't really what they seem, as we often get in a horror film. So that's where the scares come. Now, my big thing going into this film, and really the franchise as a whole, a lot of it relies on how the scares are executed. I don't mind jump scares in a movie like this, and there's a lot in this film, but it all comes down to how do you go about bringing us those scares? Are they just cliche, you know, someone pops their head into a window or places their hand on someone's shoulder and they use sound design and or the score to make you jump? Now, even that, what I just mentioned, can be executed right if you have the right director or the moment is right for something like that. And unfortunately, my big flaw with this film is as many jump scares as we get, and I'm talking constant attempts at jump scares here, I never really found myself scared. I never really found myself jumping or flinching. The only thing that really scared me about this movie were a handful of moments in that third act when all is starting to be revealed to us as an audience. The culmination of, oh, what are these people actually up to in that way? You can look at a movie like Midsommar, this cultish feel to these people that aren't necessarily what they say they are on their surface, and that's the same kind of movie that this is, except this time our lead has somewhat of a connection here, and that's the mystery surrounding this movie. A mystery that they never really hit on as well as I believe they could have, and a lot of this film is just a lot of awkward interactions between our group and this Amish group, and then we kind of rinse and repeat the same nighttime cycle over and over again. When they first arrive, they see uh, these red-looking things through the window, and they're like, ha, huh, something weird's going on over there, but it's not a big deal. Everybody's out there in the middle of the night doing something. Well, it's cool. Now, one thing I do like here is the first time they see something funky, our lead character, she's like, um, guys, this isn't right. Okay, and most of the time in a movie like this, characters will ignore a lot of things and just stay there and be content until inevitably they die or something like that. In this film, Margot says, no, no, something's not right here. There's this big mystery going on with my mother. People are telling us to stay away from certain things. We're going and exploring and finding things that just aren't uh, completely normal. So what do we do about this? And our characters, they actually try to make some smart decisions here saying, okay, can we leave? No, there's not a really a way to get out of here. But then there's a point in the film where two characters have the opportunity to both help themselves and uh, someone else who's stuck in a situation out. But instead of doing that, they go and they do something that I guess helps them in a way, but, but not really, right? There's also a moment where they ask to use someone's computer and the guy's like, yeah, just don't look up anything weird. And they're like, don't worry, we won't. And they were serious about that. And then they proceed to Google like 
demonic entities and things. I wish there would have been a scene where the guy checks his search history and saw what they were actually Googling. And it was just a weird scene altogether. There was a lot of weird scenes in this movie. And I understand you're going to have some strange interactions because you have this Amish community and they're interacting kind of with the outside world. But again, it's that rinse and repeat thing of that's kind of all there is to this film. I mean, we get that culmination, the inevitable uh, final reveal of sorts. And I wasn't all that impressed with the, I guess you call it creature design or just demonic design uh, when we finally get to see it at the end. And the beauty of some of these other Paranormal Activity movies is there's just more depth to the haunting that's taking place. This isn't necessarily that. This is more of a cultish kind of film. And applying that to this found footage style, even though they don't fully commit to it, is an interesting concept. But the characters weren't all that compelling. The story just kind of moves at a snail's pace. A lot of dialogue within this movie. And the scares... The only real scares that I was impressed with took place in the final 10 to 15 minutes of the movie. And there's a scene where we utilize that found footage style. There are police officers in the scene, so we kind of get to see some body cam footage, some dash cam footage. I'm like, okay, this is really cool. But this is like one of the final scenes in the film, and it's the first time that I've even felt that way. The rest of the movie... I was struggling to get invested in the story and the characters, and the only thing that really worked about it was the style, but again, they didn't even fully commit to that, so I just wasn't all that impressed with this film. And one step further, I wasn't all that scared, and that's not a good thing if you're a Paranormal Activity movie. So before I give you guys my score, like I said, what's your favorite Paranormal Activity film? If you like this review, you wanna see some more horror stuff, and you're excited for Halloween, drop your thumbs up down below. Uh, it doesn't feel like a paranormal activity film. And while it does finally capture some nice intensity in the third act, there just isn't much else that this film does well. In my opinion, I'm going a 40% with my score. Again, I, I think they swing for the fences on occasion with this story. And it's an interesting story, but the execution and not fully committing to this style was an issue. But I want to know, did it scare you? Was it effective in your opinion? Appreciate you big time for watching. Sorry for the stupid intro. I'll see you soon. <laughs>